Mina, Konbanwa, Jesus Freaking Gamer here, back with 2 Samuel. I'm supposed to say chapter 13, but I'm going to back up to 12 just for a minute to set the pace for chapter 13. So, David has committed adultery with Bathsheba and he committed murder by having Uriah the Hittite, Bathsheba's husband, killed by the sword of the Ammonites. So, go up to, or up, down, left, right, whichever way you want to go, whichever is appropriate for your turning. Um, 2 Samuel chapter 12, verse 9. Nathan speaking to David, Why have you despised the commandment of the Lord to do evil in his sight? You have killed Uriah the Hittite with the sword. You have taken his wife to be your wife, and have killed him with the sword of the people of Ammon. Now therefore the sword shall never depart from your house, because you have despised me, and have taken the wife of Uriah the Hittite to be your wife. Now, how that plays out, that's where 2 Samuel 13 comes into play. Again, it's, uh, it's hard to pick a particular verse um, out of the entire chapter. I'm going to try, though. Um, the first part, essentially, Amnon falls in love with his sister, Tamar. Now, I'm pretty sure they have um, different mothers because David had multiple wives, but they had the same father, David. So, still a sister. And so... Amnon with his friend Jonadab. It says in verse 3, but Amnon had a friend whose name was Jonadab. And so they make this plot for him to lure Tamar, his sister, in there. And so that way he can have sex with her. And that is um, kind of boiled down quite horribly in verse 14. Um, they execute the plan. She, she, he pretends to be sick. She comes into the room. He commands all like the servants and whatnot to walk out of the room. Says, "Come near my sister. You know, let me eat. Let me eat the food from your hand." And when she does, he grabs her. And then in verse fourteen, and she resists. She says, "No, we really shouldn't do this. This is really, really bad." And in verse fourteen, however, he would not heed her voice, and being stronger than she, he forced her and lay with her. He then proceeded to kick her out of his room. And um, her, it says her brother Absalom. So let's. Um, that's going to be in verse twenty. And Absalom, her brother. Second Samuel chapter thirteen, verse twenty. And Absalom, her brother. Not reading the entire verse again. Trying to hit the highlights, and I'm really trying to get these brief messages down brief because I've been going very over the last several days. Tried to go under yesterday, and it failed miserably. And then, after all of this. You go down to verse 28. So Absalom throws a little party. He um, he invites David, his father, to come with him. And David's like, nope, you guys go ahead and have fun. He's like, well, let the kings, let all of my brothers, let all the king's sons come with me, including Amnon. By the way, Absalom hated Amnon. You go to verse 22, and Absalom spoke to his brother, Amnon neither good nor bad, for Absalom hated Amnon because he had forced his sister Tamar. Which again makes me think Absalom and Tamar probably had the same mother, and Amnon had a different mother. Verse now go down to verse twenty-eight. Now Absalom had commanded his servants at this party, saying, "Watch now when Amnon's heart is merry with wine, and when I say to you, strike Amnon, then kill him." And they do exactly that. And then, um, and then verse thirty-four. Then Absalom fled. Once this happened. And word got to King David. Absalom fled. And what was he gone for three years, I want to say? Pretty sure it was three years. Okay, verse 38. So Absalom fled and went to Geshur and was there three years. And under under no circumstance, under neither of the two circumstances, um, Tamar's rape or Amnon's murder, it's, it mentions that David was angry about these incidents, but it doesn't say that he did anything in regards to them. So, again, there's so much I could pull up in regards to these chapters. There's so much I could dig out of these chapters. Please read the book of Samuel. These things are absolutely fascinating. I know that Amnon and Absalom didn't have to commit the sins they made because David, their father, committed the sins and mistakes that he made. They didn't have to. The Lord's never behind sin, and the word of the Lord, the prophecy that the sword would never depart from David's house, 
we know that the Lord isn't going to make us sin. He doesn't make anyone sin. He wants us to not sin. He wants us to stay away from sin. So, the word of the Lord doesn't speak of something that the Lord himself is authoring or instigating, rather something that is going to be. And it just makes me think, if David hadn't committed his sin, you know, would these would his son still have done these things? Or did the sin of the father open up a really horrible door that the sons then stepped through, and thus the prophecy of the Lord was simply not for saying not for telling something that God himself would do, but rather something that God would allow. And, and that something that David's sin had just opened up into his son's lives a really terrible door that they both walked through and they proceeded to do horrible things. And David's own horrible things precipitated that and it just makes me wonder how you know how responsible was David for it, it, not in eight he didn't directly enable them to commit rape and murder but although he committed adultery and murder himself and that's the thought you know what how much did was David responsible for doing that what he did obviously opened up the door does he bear blame does he bear guilt I certainly imagine he bore some blame and bore some guilt for not apparently not punishing his sons for what they did so all kinds of bad stuff is on the way. Reminds me of Judges. Bad stuff happened near the end of the book. Bad stuff happens near the end of this book. David does make a comeback, and all things are set right, but a lot of bad stuff happens along the way. So, yeah, let me, let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. And thank you guys very much for watching this video. Hopefully it inspired some thinking. Hopefully it, it, hopefully it inspired not easy questions. Um... It's good when you're challenged. It's good when you have to think through some things. Even I was challenged by some of the things I read in this chapter. And I don't have definite answers to. And I didn't cover those particular things because I don't have any answer whatsoever to them. So while sometimes I don't mind wild speculation, sometimes I'm like, yeah, let me let me bring up some things that aren't... Um, well, I didn't really have a clear answer for this either. So I, I, I picked and chose my topic, and I actually... I chose a topic that I just I felt like I had something to contribute here, whereas the other one is just a giant question mark. I don't know what the heck is going on. And I'm sure I've definitely gone over the um, thing at this point, but hopefully this um, video made you guys think, gave you some brain food to chew on, and hopefully by all these messages are continuing to inspire you to read the book of Samuel, First and Second Samuel, because it is so good. Thank you guys very much for watching. I love you. And God bless.